Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, I am giving you five thrift flips. Yes, you heard it right. I recently went thrifting, go figure. And in today's video, we are flipping them with grungy numbers by Roy Cycle. So I want to create a vignette and I decided to use grungy numbers for all of the flips in today's video. For project one, if you saw Friday's thrift haul, you'll remember that I picked this in my Friday video. The moment I saw this star, I absolutely fell in love with it, but I definitely wanted to flip it in some way. I didn't pay that much for it, and I had a ton of scrap Roy Cycle decoupage paper left over from that big window project, and it is grungy numbers. So all the projects in today's video will be grungy number by Roy Cycle decoupage. For step one, we are removing that knob on the front. It will just make that whole process of decoupaging all the easier versus having to try to work around it. And because it had that screw on the back, I, it was a little elbow grease to get that screw out of there, but I finally was able to do it. And then let's get started on transforming this star. I'm going to lay the star on top of the decoupage paper, take a pen, and then just roughly outline the entire star. And I want to leave a slight overhang over the entire perimeter. That way, when I lay the star down, even if it shifts a little bit, it will still be okay because in the end, we're going to sand off any excess uh, paper. Next, we're just taking the scissors and rough cutting that star out that we just traced. Does not have to be perfect. Then we're gonna set this aside and then continue on with the project. The next step that I do recommend is painting the background of your project white. And we're using White Swan from DIY Paint. And it's just a nice bright white. It's kind of my go-to white for DIY. I love all their colors, but honestly, this one I always seem to um, grab that container. Uh, when you are decoupaging, it is something that I do recommend if you want your decoupage paper to be really vibrant. I always start with a white background. You do not have to, uh, but it is something that I do recommend. Now that it's dry, I just laid my paper over just to make sure it fit, and then I put it back down again, line everything up, and anytime I am decoupaging, I always start with a starter strip. And my go-to medium for decoupaging with the Roy Cycled Paper is Liquid Patina from DIY. And you can uh, order all the supplies that we're using in today's video on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. Everything will be also in the description below if um, you didn't catch that. So uh, when I do decoupage, I always start with a starter strip. It holds everything in place, flip the paper up, and then again, lay down more of the liquid patina and then work my way down. This alleviates a lot of the wrinkles and any tearing or anything like that. And then I use my paintbrush that I'm using with the liquid patina to really smooth it out as I'm laying it down. And this is what I have found to be the easiest way to decoupage myself. I it's It seems so easy now. I just remember when I first started, I was a bit nervous and just following these steps makes it so easy and just transforms all your projects. After it is completely dry, I take a piece of sandpaper and in a downward motion, I remove any of the excess paper 
and you can see it just comes right off. This is a little bit of a heavier grit. Uh, it's just what I had laying around, um, but a lighter grit works just as good. I do like to use the little sanding blocks. Unfortunately, I have yet to go back to the store to get some. So this is just an extra piece of sandpaper that I've had laying around and I use it all the time lately for removing the excess paper. Now that's done, I'm taking a pen and reopening up that hole. I'm also applying one even coat of decoupage again on top and the whole project will be done. For project two, I also found this during my thrift haul from Friday's video. I'm leaving that design on the back just in case somebody wanted to use it um, in the future for that purpose but I am using just a chunk of this paper on the front. So very similar to what we did on the first project, I'm lining it up, trying to figure out where I want the paper um, to be, and then I'm laying down one even coat of the White Swan uh, by DIY Paint and letting that dry very thoroughly, and then we're going to apply the paper. Again, we're gonna start with a starter strip of liquid patina, and I try to lay it all down exactly how I want it, flip that chunk back, and that's where I do my starter strip. And then again, I work my way down, and really it makes the whole process, like I said, super easy. I do like to show this, though, just so that um, for those of you who have not yet uh, decoupaged, you are definitely seeing it over and over in this video. In that sandpaper again, removing any of that excess paper. I also um, am sanding off, there was a little bit of white uh, paint that had kind of gone over the edge a little bit. I just sand that off and it's all ready to go. Taking that pen again, opening up that hole, and then I'm going to use just a little bit of twine and add a hanger on there. That way, if somebody wants to hang it uh, versus just leaning it, they can do that. Lastly, I am resealing it with liquid patina. Anytime after I sand the paper, I always like to reseal all the edges and just make sure that it is a completely sealed and adhered down. For project three, I found these three rolling pins during my thrift haul on Friday. And I, two of them, I did pay $2.99 each. And then that middle one was $7.99, but it was 50% off. So I ended up getting it for $4. I really loved the shape of those handles and the look of that rolling pin. So what we're doing today is we're decoupaging two of them, and then we're just going to paint the handles on all three. Because we're only decoupaging two, I am using the white swan on two of them, and I'm just applying one even coat of white swan to both of those, and then coming back and we are going to paint the handles. 
I'm using Little Black Dress from DIY Paint, and I'm also using the new paintbrush called The Perfectionist. I absolutely love this paintbrush, guys. It gets into all the details of items, uh, allows you to really do a lot of that perfectionist work, like getting right to the very edge of this handle. And again, I'm applying one coat of the paint. Uh, DIY Paint is heavily pigmented, so really because I'm in a wet distress this back, you only need to apply one coat. Now that these are dry, let's go ahead and apply the decoupage paper. What I did here is I allowed a little excess hangover on each end of the uh, rolling pin. And for the wraparound, what I did is I started wrapping it around and I made a little slit and then I used um, like my scrapbook cutter, like a paper cutter, and I trimmed the excess paper off and it, was, it makes a very nice clean line on that. Uh, so what I'm doing here is, again, a starter strip, and I'm just working my way around and making sure that I eliminate all, as many wrinkles as I possibly can with my paintbrush and then continuing on. I do that for both of these, and then I make sure I set these aside, let them dry very thoroughly before I take my sandpaper and remove any of that excess paper on each end. And a tip here, um, I did use my sandpaper to get rid of the excess, but many of my viewers have told me that they get a little hand, like a nail file, and they use the nail fire file for, um, you know, hard to get in place like this. Now that I've sanded the excess paper off and they are all painted with the handles, now I'm just taking a little bit of water on a piece of paper towel and I am going to wet distress all three handles. And again, I just randomly wet distress here and there to make it look really aged and like these have been used a million times. Now that they are dry, I am taking Big Top and I'm sealing the handles. I am applying just a nice even coat of Big Top to all three of those and then these will be completely finished. For project four, another item I found on my Friday thrift haul were these two candlesticks and one of them was missing that round piece. So I removed the other round piece and we are gonna do something to decorate the top up. Now I am using Little Black Dress and I'm applying one even coat to the entire candlestick. And after it dried, there was just a few little spots where I had to do like a touch up so I always say like one and a half coats if that um, and once they were dry then we're going to go on to the next step. Now I'm using a piece of cardstock, taking that round disc and I am just tracing it. I'm doing two of those and then I will cut those out and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the decoupage paper. Now what I'm doing is I'm laying these down. Um, I'm going to do it on the back side and I am just tracing the entire round, but again, leaving a little bit of an overhang. And instead of using sandpaper to um, get rid of the excess, after this is all dry, we are gonna use a scissors. Here I'm using liquid patina to apply the decoupage paper to the cardstock and again the starter strip and then I smooth it all out. I do that to both of the pieces and keep in mind when the cardstock did get wet from the decoupage medium liquid patina, it did warp a little bit but then you were able to smooth it right back out. 
Now I already cut one down. There was that little bit of an overhang. What I did is I took my other, my scissors and I trimmed around as close to the round as I possibly could. And then we are going to put these on the top of the candlesticks. I do want to wet distress the candlesticks just to bring a little bit of the white out. And again, I am just taking a, normally I take a damp rig. I just had some paper towel that I did um, pour a little water on and I randomly just wiped all over um, on the raised areas to bring out a little bit of the detail and a little bit of that white. And again, I just did it random on both of the candlesticks and and I am loving how these are turning out. Now that the candlesticks have dried from the wet distressing, we are going to apply the pieces of cardstock to the top. I'm sticking them down with Type Bond. I absolutely love this glue. Uh, it's Type Bond, quick and thick, and it works for virtually everything. So I squirt it a little bit on. I am smoothing it out with my finger and then putting on that round cardstock. I just rub all over to really make sure it has good adhesion and oh, these turned out absolutely gorgeous. The last thing we want to do is we want to seal the entire candlestick with Big Top. Anytime you're using DIY paint, you do need to seal it with some type of top coat, whether that be Big Top, a poly, a wax, and I am using Big Top and I am going to apply one even coat to the entire piece. For my fifth and final project, yes, the crate that I found on my Friday thrift haul, I am trying to be really good guys and flip the items right away so they don't sit in my stash for ages. So this was $5.99 and my vision for this is I'm going to paint it little black dress and then put the decoupage paper on the front. And I think this is going to turn out awesome. For starters, I break out the little black dress from DIY and I paint both ends and the entire inside. And again, I'm using that paintbrush, The Perfectionist, to really help get into all those nitty gritty details on the inside of this crate. Next up, we're going to apply the decoupage paper to both of the fronts and I have already cut the two chunks of paper that I'm going to use and lay it out and then again I start on one side and I work my way down just like you've seen with the rest uh, and really I cannot uh, tell you guys enough that starter strip really makes a difference. After it's dry, I am taking my sandpaper like I did with the rest of the projects, going ahead in the downward motion and getting rid of any of the excess paper. After I do this, I then bring out um, the entire crate outside and I use my hand sander and basically I distress the heck out of the entire piece. So on the handle, on all the edges, I just want it to look really grungy and worn kind of like the paper here it is all distressed and I love it I uh, now need to seal the entire piece though so uh, I am using big top from DIY and I am going to seal the entire piece including the decoupage paper typically I had always been using uh, liquid patina to seal it but you know, Big Top is a sealer as well. So I'm going through the entire piece and doing one even coat of Big Top. And then this project is complete.
what did you guys all think? I absolutely, well, first of all, I love Roycycle's decoupage paper. That is why I carry it. But I just love how a simple piece of paper can transform an item and make it look completely different. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you got some great inspiration uh, to flip some of your own items. And Friday's video, I'm not yet sure. I did do some taping from this past weekend when I was in the North Woods of Wisconsin. The Phelps rummage sales uh, took place. I just don't know exactly how much footage I actually have. I'm hoping <laughs> enough to put together um, a video. I also got some really great items. So it might be like, uh, kind of like a thrift haul video. Who knows? Um, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, but you guys have yourselves a great week. And just remember, tonight I am going live on Facebook and YouTube again. Um, we are going to finish that Chase Lounge. I'm super excited uh, to try to get as much done as I can. Hoping to finish tonight. Um, we'll see. We have an hour. So we will see you tonight. Otherwise, back on Friday. Bye.